Good evening tonight from South Sudan, where you're about to witness an urgent race against time. Aid workers on the ground here will tell you in a region known for conflict, they're up against a war now they cannot win. A changing climate, the extremes here becoming more extreme, the drought and the floodwaters. This is the only road in and the only reason it's dry is because of the mud walls holding the floodwaters back. Tonight, the excruciating journey to get to the families now cut off, farmlands now underwater, and the only way, they say, they're keeping these families alive. We land in South Sudan, where we are told there is an urgent effort to get to more than a million people in desperate need because of climate. The UN trucks waiting. We head out to the World Food Program, traveling down the only road in, carrying aid from Sudan. And we're there as the last convoy makes it in from Sudan before the deadly violence breaks out to the north. Mud walls holding the water back. And then the only way to get to so many of the families here is by boat. What's happening here is staggering. Climate change making the extremes here, the drought and the floods, only more extreme. Four years in a row now of historic flooding, with waters unable to recede. This is a very common sight here after four years of relentless rains. This is a tiny piece of land completely surrounded uh, by the waters here, an island in and of itself. And these are the families that have stayed behind to continue to raise their children here. But what do they feed the children here with no land to farm on anymore? We are told the water lilies. And then we see her, a mother in the distance. The haunting sounds, the coughing, the quiet splashing in the water, the determined work in stagnant, dangerous floodwaters. The water nearly to her chest, reaching down to pull out the water lilies and their bulbs. This mother reaching down so far, she is nearly underwater herself. It is what they do for their children. And this mother who proudly shows the bulbs to us. They dry them and pound them into paste to feed them to their children. Mothers are feeding their children water lilies. Unfortunately, they are. It is a coping mechanism because they do not have enough food. How do they get any food when they're completely surrounded by water? Uh, that is a biggest challenge that they are facing here, the availability of food. Before they had land where they could cultivate food, but now they are completely cut off. Families cut off with so little land and no livestock. It's just a stunning sight to see the cows out here in the middle of, of the water. This used to be farmland before the floods. The livestock, uh, it's impossible to know just how much has been lost uh, during these floods, but you can see uh, they're nothing but skin and bones, these cows here, uh, still searching for something to eat uh, and basically marooned out here in the middle of the water. We meet three siblings on the water. What do you have there? <laughs> they tell us they have gathered grass and sticks. They're saying they're trying to take them to town so that they could sell it. And what will people use it for? What? She's saying that they're going to use them to construct their homes. And they're now bringing it now to where most people are on the other side of the yes. dike, hoping yeah. to sell it for people building homes yeah. on the other side of the flood. Yeah. We make it to one of the islands, the children at the water's edge, many of them with bellies that signal the emergency. The woman who greets us with a smile Hello. as we head to find the makeshift clinic here. We're told of the families on this island uh, who have come to the nutrition center uh, for help. And you can see the mothers and their children here. Uh, they're waiting to be screened, that they have all brought their children here for help. This little boy among the children here, a hint of a smile. All of them waiting for help. Women bring their children here. The children Achal Chan is the head of nutrition for the World Food Program here in South Sudan. The nutrition assistant will now measure the child's uh, upper arm. They are trying to determine the level of malnutrition. He's marking the child's arm to get the midpoint of the upper arm. The mother and her baby, who is just one. What did you find? I find that uh, this child is malnourished. Malnourished. Yeah. We ask her, how did she feed her child before today? What are you able to feed your child? 
She's saying that they only feed her water lilies. Water lilies. She tells us she is grateful her baby is getting help. Yes. She says yes. Yes. We are glad too, yes. And we learn here that the children most at risk have been brought here to the state hospital in Bentu. Children on the brink of starvation. And we see it. The nine-year-old boy, John Chol, drinking water. And then slowly falling back down onto his bed. And we learn of the young mother, her baby, just 40 days old, a little more than a month, weighing less than four pounds. You must be relieved that your baby is doing much better. She's saying yes. Yes, she says. Her newborn son and his tiny grip, a sign of hope here. These children, they say, are the innocent victims of climate change. Because of the climate change. You think it's because of the climate change? That is what I can say to. I mean, the land has changed. The land is about flooded. The land is flooded, actually. There is no area for cultivation. And that is because of the climate change. He tells me the lack of food is overwhelming here. How dire is the situation on the ground here in South Sudan? The situation of malnutrition is huge. It's huge. It is huge. There is no food. There is no food. But you are the one helping to save the children. At the moment, yes. Out on those tiny slivers of land, they look for the children most at risk. Grace Nyakoth is from here. She now works for the World Food Program. What do you make of the, of the change in climate? It's only a few weeks to, to rainy season, and this might worsen with time as, uh, as it is. It's all flooded everywhere. And you haven't even begun wet season, yeah. rainy season? The rainy season is only two weeks to three weeks. From now? From now. We're on the front lines right here of climate change. Yeah, no, I think there's no question. This is the front lines. This is where we're seeing the change. That's not just one extreme event. Bill Null monitors the change in climate for the World Food Program. After one year, you might think you can come back and start again. But after four years of cumulative flooding, I think people are, are starting to think that this is a long-term change. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, no, no. no I, never imagined anything quite at this scale. Scientists and researchers with the UN have studied the wet season growing more extreme here. From 2019 to 2020, the waters that did not recede. And then 2021, 2022, and this is now. They say the wetlands have tripled in size in just four years. The amount of land erased by the water here is stark. For about 5% to 12 to 15% of the entire territory of the country. It's just Underwater. amazing. Yeah. That's an astounding figure. Oh, it is. It is. And scientists say temperatures in this region are rising at double the global rate, making both the droughts and the flooding more acute. The extremes are only growing more extreme. The wet season is wetter. The wet season is wetter, there are parts of the country that are becoming drier, and the victims of all of these are innocent South Sudanese whose numbers are in need are increasing. In fact, scientists here point out the people of South Sudan contribute less than a tenth of a percent of carbon dioxide emissions worldwide, and yet they are paying a devastating price. And as we're on the ground here, we see it. The people here know what's coming again in just weeks. We witness an extraordinary scene. The women building a mud wall by hand, a dike, to hold any new floodwaters back. To try to reclaim some of their land. They are up against overwhelming challenge, and yet still, a smile on this woman's face. When you look at the effects of climate change here, how does it get better? I don't know if can get better. Climate change is very real and um, I have been in South Sudan for two and a half years and there are parts of this uh, state that we came in a boat that I used to walk on so I don't know if it gets better. It, the only way it can get better is that uh, we receive more assistance. 
If you look over my shoulder here, you can see the very top of somebody's hut where a family once lived. And, and once you recognize what that is, you can see it sort of peppering the landscape here, the, the water's edge. Uh, home after home, just completely destroyed. In fact, the water so deep in some places, the World Food Program uses amphibious vehicles to get to communities hardest to reach. We travel with them as they pass by old villages no longer. And when we finally get there, hours into this journey, the children running toward us. <laughs> then we see something unexpected when we come back. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.